Well, hi again. I'm George okay. from Backstage TV and TV Robot from the Czech Republic, and it's a big pleasure to meet you, man. And I would like to do the interview because uh, there was a time when uh, almost nobody could find anything about you. For quite a lot of years, you were just, you know, uh, hidden from the public scene. But now you can see quite a lot of interviews uh, from a nowadays stuff with Conception and also your solo plans. So I would like to do a little interview like uh, through whole of your career. So uh, first question of mine would be, uh, what was the first moment when you said to yourself, I would like to be a singer? You know, what was the inspiration or how was it like? Uh, I'm not really sure there was a specific moment, but um, uh... You know, I I, I, start, um, I was a big fan of um, Aha back in the 80s, and and uh, uh, you know, at some point when I was trying to you know uh, mimic these songs or to try to re-sing them, I, I figured out I had a somewhat similar voice. At least I could you know do the, 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 this high type falsetto stuff that Morton Harkin did. Mm -hmm. So so at that point, I I started enjoying singing at least. Uh, but I'm not really sure if there's an exact moment where, you know, the decision was made. So it was during the 80s, so you were like a teenager or even younger? How was it like? Yeah, yeah, yeah teenager. Teenager, okay. And how did you meet the guys from Conception the first time? Because I read some stories, some kind of bathroom stories that they heard you singing somewhere in the bathroom and they said, oh, hey, this is a great voice. And I don't know if it's a true or just a rumor. Uh, so uh, do you uh, have... Well, the, the... Yeah, the thing is, uh, um, I, I auditioned for a punk band, mm -hmm. uh, one, one, one audition, uh, and, and it was a friend of those guys that had heard me sing in the shower at school. Oh. Uh, now, uh, when it comes to conception, uh, I went to this musical school after, after senior high, and uh, um, a friend of theirs were there and he heard me sing, so he tipped me, a, I mean, he tipped them about me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I auditioned Conception like like you know a year after uh, the year after I went to that musical school, okay. and uh, and then we started working together. So you also liked punk music when you uh, tried to be a member of a punk band as well, right? It was just, it was just this guy that 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 you know heard me sing in the showers at school, and uh, and uh, this band was looking for a singer desperately, and and you know since I could say, but I mean my my voice is not punky at all, oh, so I didn't fit. And you know to be honest, that that the the I'm nothing wrong with punk. I mean there's a lot of cool punk music, but. It's not really my type, uh, uh, not really my cup of tea, uh, and, and my voice doesn't really fit. Mm -hmm. And so what is your favorite memory from the first conception era, from the 90s? You know, uh, is there any specific moment or moments which you like the most or which you love to remember? I, I, I really remember the first uh, gig that we did uh, after we signed with Noise, because that was, uh, you know, we, we, you got to remember that we, we were, um, we sort of went out with a bang with this this uh, first uh, record that we did, you know, self finance, Lost Sunset, and uh, it wasn't long after that that we uh, did another demo, and we were actually signed to to Noise Records uh, just a year or so, year and a half maybe after I joined joined the band, 
And um, and they threw us right out there on the big stages with, together with Rage and Gamma Ray. And I remember after just a handful of really poorly attended uh, uh, local shows, it was uh, scary and really cool to be, you know, go out there and play in front of, you know, two, three thousand people. It was awesome uh, uh, and scary at the same time, but I really feel that that was a, uh experience that we you know grew a lot on fast you know at that stage we were great and what album from the 90s you like the most and why there is one of them which you prefer i like all of them but but flow is probably the one that is closest to you know uh, what we ever wanted the band to sound like from the beginning so uh, i guess i'll go I have a nice memory with Fabio Leone. You know Fabio Leone, the singer. Mm -hmm. So we did two duet songs together as well, and he was in my place in Prague a couple of times. And once we were just listening to the whole Flow album, and we were singing it all along because we <laughs> love this album. So it's always my favorite, the best five or something like that. Fabio and yeah. me. So that was great. <laughs> okay, and uh, could you tell me the story, like how you became a Camelot singer? How was the story like between conception and Camelot? You know this kind of. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that that went really fast too, and and you know, um, uh, we, we, uh, I guess Thomas in 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 ninety seven or ninety six ninety seven we 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 um, uh, were thrown off this tour that we were supposed to do with Stradivarius, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like they had been selling tickets with our name on the on the billing, and and one week before we were supposed to head out, we we were just you know told, hey. You're not needed on the tour, and we're like, why? No explanation whatsoever. And of course, that was a big bummer after uh, having produced what we believe to be the, the the masterpiece of our career, you know, with Flow, mm -hmm. not being able to go out there and promote the album with the tour, uh, which which had been in the planning for a long time. So you know, with with with, with that uh, big disappointment, uh, we just felt that okay, let's just put it on ice. And um, Thomas must have read about this, so. Because he called me about like two months or a month later, and asked me if I wanted to help them out with with um, Siege Perilous, which yeah. they were in in the process of recording. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the situation was actually pretty much like when I joined Conception for The Last Sunset, because they were also in the middle of producing this album that was finished, written, and and I just came in last minute to you know help them out with the vocals. And same thing with Camelot. Uh, so, so history sort of repeated itself, but Camelot was a little bit more lucky with the timing. I think that the, the timing of things, because we hit a, a nerve in the market uh, where where our kind of music with roots in the '80s sort of you know really picked up again. Yeah, and the combination of the American power metal and your Norwegian and you know your roots as a person, mm -hmm. as a singer, you know, it fit together perfectly. Which, uh, again, which moment of Camelot story of yours you like the most, or which album? Because uh, there were quite, uh, you know, uh, the lyrics were very, uh, very interesting, and you know, there were the story, like the concept and albums and stuff like that. So, which period or which part of that story you like the most? 
Um, I mean, same same thing as with conception. You know, I I love all of it. We we always put everything we we have. You know, any given time or any given moment. So so it's always. Uh, but um, I I I guess you know the the period around the time of the recordings of the Black Halo and One Cold Winter's Night. Mm -hmm. That was a that was a period in our careers where where you know everything was uh, we were coming out really f fresh and and forceful you know after after having um, uh, teamed up with you know the the, the 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 new lineup with all of us you know me Oliver uh, uh, Casey um, and and uh, um, and of course Sasha and Miro uh, had been you know on the team for a couple of records and at this point we had all. I feel uh, managed to to figure each other out, and and you know everything was in line, uh, and, and we were just and I also think that the lyrics were hit 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 a nerve in people that that you know uh, there's something very existential about about the the, the lyrical themes on, on on that album in particular. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, I mean that was a long answer, but that that period in in in, in the Camelot. Uh, in, in my Camelot time, uh, I think was the uh, most crucial thing. <laughs> And when you just disappear from the public scene and from the musical you know, business, uh, were you still writing music, or was it still in your head somehow? Or because mm -hmm. I can't imagine as a musician, I can't imagine to stop this inside my head. Of course, you can stop the career, but how was that with uh, like writing process and creating process? Yeah, the first couple of years, I didn't do anything. Like, like I, re I was so sick of everything that even faintly reminded me of, of you know, that life and that lifestyle. So I didn't do much the last couple of uh, the, the first couple of years. Uh, I mean, I sang a little bit in church and, and and stuff like that, but nothing nothing major at all. So, uh, but you know, I slowly started writing songs again. Uh, I don't know, in 2015 or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, a couple of years later, uh, uh, our Ventura from Conception came came up to me and and presented you know, some some conception ideas, and then we started you know working on that again. Mm -hmm. And you said in some interview that uh, that was really hard for you to kind of switch from that Roy Khan from the stage, you know, to the father and the husband and the normal person. So how are you doing it now? Is it now possible for you to, you know, skip from Roy Khan on the stage to the Roy as a, you know, normal person, father, husband, etc.? Well, the big difference is, of course, you know, but, uh, at that point, Camelot was such a big part of my life. So it was hard to uh, it was hard to when 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 you live half your life as a you know character mm -hmm. and, and and the rest the, the the other half you're supposed to be like the normal normal you I guess it's uh, uh, at a certain point it, it it becomes hard to you know differ between the two because even when I was home you know I was still you know totally soaked in work and 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 you know Camelot thinking so mm -hmm. it, it was just so so massively you know it was getting big and 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 complex and um uh, all consuming mm -hmm. so yeah uh, it was a it was a good choice to quit at that point where i was in my life 
I think so. I can imagine that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, at, I think during that those years when you were just uh, out of the scene, there was some rumor that you were planning a solo album. And I saw. I think also there was some cover artwork on the internet. Maybe it was a fake or who knows. You know. So were there any plans of your solo album before the conception? You know, uh, reunion yeah. happened. Or not at all. Not, not really. I mean, the, the, I mean, this this solo thing is is uh, is very uh, uh, floaty. Let's put it that way. In, in the sense that you know, I'm I'm still not entirely sure what it's going to be, uh, but you know, that I'm getting the, uh, 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 it's starting to shape up, uh, and uh, I will release something hopefully the, now this year with with stuff that is already recorded. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, speaking of, uh, you know, crucial moments, uh, uh, the, 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 this first series that I'm going to put out is, is going to be a series of cover songs uh, with, with uh, where the theme is my first. So it's going to be, uh, I'm going to do covers of, you know, the, 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 the first uh, uh, song that I heard, you know, the first Norwegian song that I heard, the first musical song I did, the first Christian song I did, the first uh, song I ever sang in a microphone. So that's going to be the theme for this first round of, of, of you know, mm -hmm. uh, streaming concerts. And uh, but I also have a ton of songs, like or original songs. I just but that that's, you know, when you work in a band like Conception of Camelot, at least you have one or two other people that you can or or all of them, you know, to 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 lean on when 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 it comes to getting all the the, the work done because it, there's a lot of work doing the production. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if I'm doing a solo thing and, and, and have to do everything myself or either or, or, or pay people to, to do it for me, uh, it's just as it's, it's, it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit overwhelming. So I'm hesitant to even start the process, but um, the songs are there and I just, you know, <laughs> I just need to get the inspiration to actually uh, get it out. She's slowly dying. With a secret she hides Silent crying For a child to come by She's slowly dying With a secret she hides Silent crying If she did she the world she dreams of, but the world passes by. 